son remained calm as the judge read the sentence, death by execution. Josue Flores was murdered last Tuesday on his way home from school. I had a nightmare the other night. It was so real. It just thought the world was dead. I told him I was crazy. Officers tell us Trujillo stabbed her boyfriend with stiletto heel shoes. Police say the suspect may be responsible for the murders of at least six women whose bodies have been found in or near the Acres Homes area. Defense attorneys had argued that Yates was legally insane and grossly psychotic when she drowned the children. One by one, they described the deaths of the alleged other eight victims of the convicted rail car killer. This is wild that a female would be locked up in a dungeon with a bunch of killer's weapons and stuff like that. What kind of woman is this? <laughs> Psychopath! <laughs> Psychopath dealing with psychopath stuff. No. Well, they they asked me, how can you do it? How can you sit in that room? It doesn't bother me. I don't know, am, am I heartless or what? But it doesn't bother me. It took me 20 years to enjoy my job. But I thoroughly enjoy my job. I only have one drawback to my job. My commute. But that proves to you right there that I like my job. How many people would make a commute of 106 miles when you're eligible to retire? in here what's not in here <laughs> uh, you name it you name it the only thing three items I do not receive from the courts are guns drugs and live ammo 
My name is Rhonda Spinks. I am the senior criminal exhibit clerk for the Harris County District Clerk's Office. This room contains all the exhibits from both misdemeanor and felony courts. It's all cases. Misdemeanor, felony, felony capitals, everything, anything that is submitted as an exhibit to the court reporter. What happens is I schedule appointments with the court reporters and I go downtown to their offices and they turn them, they, sub, they submit them to me and then I bring them back here and start processing them. Every single one of them. <laughs> I had a case one time, a court reporter turned into me and when I'm going through the photographs, I'm not looking at the photograph really, I'm just looking for the exhibit number. Because if I looked at every photograph, it would take forever. So I'm flipping through. I'd stick, you know, flip over a stack, flip through. Well, I just happened to flip over and the next photograph, I look down and I'm like, where's the man's head? Oh, it's in the Walmart bag there by his body. I mean, you got some weird stuff in this room. You got machetes, you got mannequins, you got swords, you got pipe bombs. Car doors, pipe bombs that I didn't even know I had. That's what I'm saying. I don't know half the stuff that's in this room because who has time to go through all these boxes? Each case is different. But they're the same, but different at the same time, if that makes any sense. A murder is a murder, but how they are murdered is, you know, the stuff you receive. Anna Trujillo, the stiletto killer. Early Sunday morning, officers say they got a call regarding an altercation in an upstairs unit. When they arrived, investigators say Trujillo opened the door. Moments later, they found her 59-year-old boyfriend covered in blood on the floor. She killed with her must be about a six or a seven inch stiletto heel. Oh. I think it's this box. Ta -da. And there's still hair on the heel. I would break my neck in a shoe like that. And from what I understand, they were pretty expensive shoes. All I had was my shoe, so I just took my shoe off and I didn't know what else to do. And I just started to hit him. Burnt stove. Seven children were inside the home daycare on February 24, 2011. Four would not survive. On the day of the fire, investigators began to doubt Jessica Tata's story of what happened inside. She left a, a pot on the stove and went to Target and left the kids in the daycare. And I'll have two stoves forever because it's a high profile case. Well, I won't have them forever because I'll eventually retire, but somebody's gonna have them forever. Prosecutors argued Tata's negligence was to blame. Today is the day, and now is the time, and you are the people that should hold this defendant responsible. I don't even call that negligence, I call it stupidity. And my daddy always tell me, don't ever call anybody stupid, but she was stupid. Um, let's go back over this way. Irsan, this was my very first case that I entered. Honor killing. Ali Irsan has been connected to three deaths. In fact, several members of Irsan's family have been linked to crimes. Ali Awad Mohammed Irsan. What about him? Him and his son were charged with uh, killing his daughter's best friend and his daughter's husband. The jury found no mitigating circumstances that would have allowed sparing her son's life. And once the dad got the death penalty, the son took a plea and got 40 years, I think. Oh, I got a good one for you. Does Carla Faye Tucker ring a bell to you? 
That's her pickaxe. I had to cry out to God, let him know that what I'd done was horrible and that I needed forgiveness. Forgiveness for murdering a man and a woman with a pickaxe during a 1983 break in. She murdered somebody and there's actual photos with the pickaxe still in the body. I didn't even know that till yesterday. She is historical because she was the first woman executed since like the 1800s or sometime. Civil War, I think you said or something. Long time ago. But this shows you how old this case is. VHS and cassette. There's actually a, a retention period for misdemeanor cases and felonies up to five years is actually only one year from the final judgment. But if they're still in prison, I hold on to them because anything could, they could need them for anything while they're still. Now, once they're not incarcerated anymore for whatever reason, a, they got out on their own, they died in prison, or they were executed. I, you know, I don't have a, pro I don't have a problem getting rid as long as it's not a high profile case. Jose Flores case. Most wakes are heartbreaking. This one is gut-wrenching. 11-year-old Josue Flores was, by every account, and we've heard many of them, as special a kid as they come. So in a room with thousands of boxes. Thousands. That's the one. Yeah. The one case in this room that just tugs at my heartstrings. And I try not to let that happen because I have to be strong in, in this job. But it was, you take one of those deep breath kind of things every time I pull this case down off the shelf. Ten-year-old boy innocently murdered. I mean, it just—I don't know. It just that one. That one got to me. He was such a loving, smart boy, and he—he he never been mean to anyone. He always, when somebody's mean to him, he he would just say, "I'm sorry. Let's be friends." Josue was stabbed to death here at Fulton and James. Prosecutors have charged 27-year-old Andre Jackson Jr. with Josue's murder. They say surveillance video and his ATM card linked him to the area the afternoon Josue was killed. Pure evil. And then he, he claimed self-defense. Okay, listen, you're here, running here. I want to know the truth, Andre. Are you a monster? No. He was an innocent boy walking home from school. I mean, a lot of these murder victims are innocent people at the wrong place at the wrong time, which he was too, well, he wasn't even in the wrong place at the wrong time because he was walking home from school. Can't explain it. Remember your little brother, little sister? Yes. At that time in your life? Yes. If somebody harmed your brother or sister, wouldn't you want I everyone wouldn't. to help? The whole world would want to help. And I know deep down inside that you're going to want to help. Sir, I understand what you're saying and everything like that, but I didn't kill this guy. And okay, then what obviously did you I was in the area. I'm just not comfortable talking about what I seen and why I was running in the area. I'm trying to do my job. You swore an oath 
to the U.S. Constitution to protect these people right here. This was your life. This, as a United States Marine, is your sole mission in life. Your mission is to protect these people. My mission is to protect these people. And my mission is to get to the truth here. It's all I want is the truth. A judge Wednesday sentenced Andre Jackson, the man convicted of killing Josue Flores, to life in prison. Your Honor, I'm asking you to right the wrongs in the system. Jackson, in a written statement, begged the judge for five years. He cited an unfair case, one he wrote relied on revenge rather than justice. But after speaking for some 16 minutes, Jackson learned he'd spend the rest of his life behind bars. Justice was done today for Josue Flores. In one of the photos, you look on the on the clock in the photo and I think it reads 3.30 or 4 and then 30 minutes later he was gone. It's, it was sad, really sad. by the CDC this week shows Texas is already experiencing moderate levels of flu activity. So you talk about your mom a lot. Does she like brag on you? Mm, not. Nah, she, she, I love my mother, but she's, she's tough. She's tough. <laughs> I think in my 56 years, I've seen her cry maybe once or twice. Oh, wow. Yeah. I take a lot of my job home mentally, and I shouldn't. Because I care about, I, I care, I, passionate about my job. They always kid me, you want a little coffee with your creamer? How many do you take? Eight. Eight? What flavor do you like? Caramel macchiato. Like your own Starbucks. This is Rhonda, can I help you? It's a capital murder. I've always been interested in criminal justice when I back in my younger days when my college years that I didn't finish, um, I was majoring in criminal justice. So I don't know, it just kind of goes along with it. Back in 2019, I would, was the civil exhibit clerk. I had been civil exhibits for 15 years. And the, um, the lady that was over criminal exhibits prior to me was retiring. And I just, Thought it would be interesting. How has this job changed you? None. I don't think it's changed me. I really don't. Because even when I did the civil exhibits for 15 years, I was very meticulous about that too. Were you that strong, as you say, prior to coming in this room? Yes. Yeah, I was. I think that's one of the things that helped me coming in here. Yeah. Strong, organized meticulous. What makes you tick? Why do you like this? What does it What makes me tick is my heart. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I want you to be as true People to are intimidated by me. Why? That's what I don't know. Because if they, inside, you could, I could be a bee, and then 30 seconds later, I could be crying. You wouldn't see that. What's that? You wouldn't see that. I was bullied in school. Kids bully for stupid reasons. I never told my parents. Never. From the sixth grade through senior in high school, I never told my parents. I didn't tell them until a few years ago. I was bullied in high school. What? Went in the military, I was still timid. Had a coworker. He was about six foot four, six foot five, and he walks up to me and he goes, <sniffs> he sniffs the top of my head. And it was like a switch went off in my head. Said a few choice words to him, and I never looked back. Nobody ever bullied me again. He got the death sentence, so let's look and see if he if he's still on if he's still on death row, then it's gonna be downtown. What does your dad think about all this? Uh, I don't I don't think he gets the, what all th this entails. I don't think you know he realizes what all's you know because he's never been here. If he's never seen it, I'd like to see what his reaction is and how you present stuff to him. Is Dad there? Can I talk to him? Hey, Papa. My big pop poppy. You love me? You love me? How much you love me? Would you be willing to come down to my job so I could give you a tour of my room? All right, see you at about noon, noon 30. Bye. This is what we look like packing up to move after 38 years. <laughs> Ronald Haskell. He drove from Utah and the, the wife or ex-wife's family, he, he killed her and I don't know how many children. He dressed up as a, like a FedEx employee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have his FedEx uniform in here. The FedEx uniform, the court reporter turned in the shoes, the shorts, the shirt, and the hat. And she told me, Rhonda, if they had turned in his underwear, I was done. <laughs> Those were her words. What do y'all think about your daughter being in this room with all this stuff? I think nothing short of her because I know I'm, that's the type of person she is. She likes stuff like this. Now I know where her migraine headaches come from. <laughs> the other day I, I told him I'm, I'm just like him in the sense of I get something on my brain and my brain can't shut down at night. Physical appearance, she looks like me. Other things. <laughs> like what? We won't go there on. <gasps> she had no name. I didn't. Oh, you're Jean's daughter. And up until I retired, she still didn't have a name. And oh, you're, you're Jean's daughter. Everybody knew Jean, but they didn't know Rhonda. <laughs> yeah, she's retired from Harris County also. But yeah, I didn't have a, I didn't have an identity. I always said some of these cases, that's why people commit crimes because they have no identity. Thank goodness I didn't take after them. <laughs> yeah, she's a hard worker and we're proud of her. 
I, I joke and say whoever's gonna whoever takes over after me is gonna need a stepladder. 